Hey guys, this is Dustin from D3 Imagery. In my video last week, I promised you a direct comparison between the 16 millimeter Sigma F1.4 and the tried and true Rokinon 12 millimeter F2 for astrophotography. And we finally have conditions, I think, tonight where I'll be able to do that test for you. I'd like to talk real quick about what we know about these lenses versus what we don't know about these lenses. First and foremost, we know that these lenses have two different fields of view. The Rokinon being 12 millimeters is going to have a wider field of view than the Sigma, which is at 16 millimeters. So we can maybe get more stars in the shot. The Sigma, however, has a wider aperture at f1.4. So we know with the Sigma, we're probably going to be able to gather more light. Uh, the difference, precisely, is uh, one stop of light between the Rokinon and the Sigma. Now, one thing to consider is the 500 rule in astrophotography. Definitely look that up. Basically, at the operational maximums for these two lenses, we can do a 25 second exposure with the Rokinon, and we can only do a 20 second exposure with the Sigma without star trailing occurring in our photos. So when you keep that in mind and you're really operating these lenses at their maximums for astrophotography, the difference in light gathering abilities between these lenses is actually two thirds of a stop of light. So the Sigma's advantage is reduced a little bit when you consider that the Rokinon can take a longer exposure. So, but really, what we need to see are two photos of the exact same scene, the same composition, uh, the same exact time of these two lenses and see is one sharper than the other one. Or uh, maybe the corners aren't so sharp in one lens, but they are in the other. So these are some things definitely we're going to want to uh, take a closer look at tonight. So once again, why don't you come along with me and we'll see how it goes. Always got to get the Tim Hortons before going out. Is this thing on? Yeah. All right. Well, we made it. So tonight, uh, I got really lucky. Um, to be honest with you, there were some clouds in the forecast even for right now. It's 4.30 in the morning. We're right on the riverside and uh, this is just a really beautiful place to, to be. Behind me is the Five Channels Dam and this is what we're gonna be photographing tonight. I was just pumped when I get out here to see not a cloud in the sky and I'm honestly really surprised that that's the case tonight. So. I don't really want to take a risk though because there's a good chance that clouds could start rolling in so I'll be really brief. I'm going to go ahead and start testing the Sigma versus the Rokinon lens now and uh, I bought a flashlight earlier tonight because uh, I think I'd like to test out a little light painting here as well tonight. So here we go. All right, what a wonderful night to go out and shoot the stars. The skies were clear, couldn't have asked for uh, better conditions or more beautiful place to photograph the stars. I'd like to know in the comments section below, what are your favorite places to shoot the stars? I'd also like to know what is a place that you would like to go and shoot the stars that you haven't been to already. I'd also like to say thank you to everybody who subscribed over the past couple of weeks and for liking this video. The last couple of shots that you just saw were both shot on the Sigma because it's a new lens to me 
and I really want to take it through its paces. I was really pleased with the results. But let's do our comparison between the Sigma and the Rokinon. We'll jump right into it here. Now let me start by asking you this question. Can you tell which lens is which? Now you might be able to, based on the focal length, you might be able to judge which one has more stars in the frame than the other, but I'd guess that you probably, just at this level, can't really tell which lens is which. I want to start off by saying that you're going to get great results from either of these lenses. I almost put my Rokinon on eBay when I got my Sigma, but then just decided it's too good of a lens for too low of a price to get rid of. You're going to be pleased with the results from either one of these lenses. But if you want to get really granular about this and pixel peep and decide which one you think truly has the best image quality for shooting stars, let's go ahead and do that right now. I will tell you, on the left we have the Sigma 16mm f1.4 and on the right we have the Rokinon 12mm f2. They both exhibit a good amount of vignetting, but I don't really count that against them because they both have profiles that will correct that. If you visit the develop module and enable profile corrections, it's quite easy to correct. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and pixel peep and see if we can crown one of these lenses as the king of image quality. Let's start with the center. Again, on the left we have the Sigma, and on the right we have the Rokinon. Ultimately, I leave the final judgment up to you, but I've looked over these images over the past couple of hours, and I can't help but notice that in terms of center sharpness, it is just a hair, hair sharper on the Rokinon. In my opinion, it's not enough to really crown it a king, but to my eye, it does seem like it possesses a slight sharpness in the center. Now, it is being shot at f2 instead of f1.4, so that could be why. More on that later. Now, looking at the corners, we notice the Sigma and Rokinon obviously are going to lack a little bit of sharpness in the corners. The Sigma here on the left is demonstrating a little bit of astigmatism. You see a little bit of astigmatism on the Rokinon as well. Again, I, I do feel like the Rokinon does have a little bit more sharpness to the eye. But this is at 100%. It is a hair sharper. And it's nothing that I think would be enough to say that it's a better or more superior lens for astrophotography over the Rokinon. As you go throughout the frame of either of these shots, you're going to notice that stars have aberrations. Now, there is one thing about the Sigma for sure, well, well more than one thing, but there's one thing I'll mention right now that I really do think it does slightly better than the Rokinon. To my eye, I like the way that it renders stars better. Especially in the center of the frame, I notice with the Sigma that the stars have a more pleasing shape. They're a little bit rounder, they're a little bit more pleasing. It could, again, have something to do with the F 1.4 aperture or just the design of the lens. I don't know. But as I look throughout the frame at different examples of stars that both of them shot, I can't help but think that the uh, the way that the Rokinon, or, or pardon me, the way that the Sigma renders stars, shapes, is a little bit more pleasing. Just a hair a bit more pleasing than the Rokinon. But again, you can watch this again on mute. Don't listen to me, but just look at the example images and come to your own conclusions. That's the most important thing here. They're both fantastic lenses. Now something that really I thought was interesting is I decided to expose using my camera's meter using the maximum aperture and shutter speed for both lenses. The Sigma, as we see over here, was shot at f1.4 naturally and a 20 second exposure. Metering on the back of the camera I was able to expose with an ISO of 800. Same exact method on the Rokinon. We exposed at an f2 
a 25 second exposure, so a little longer because it's a wider lens, but to get the same metering value on the back of the camera, I had to shoot the ISO up to 1600. You draw your own conclusions from that, but that tells me that the Sigma, you can shoot at lower ISOs, you can retain a little bit more detail than the Rokinon because of that extra two-thirds of a stop of light that you can get from the Sigma. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the field of view and also how that affects the, uh, the look of the image as well. This one's pretty easy. All we have to do is look at the two images. Obviously the Sigma is going to punch in a little bit more where the Rokinon is going to show some more details in the landscape. So you might suggest that if you're going to shoot closer to an object like this, you might actually favor the Rokinon because I got a few more things in the shot. If I want to crop it out, I can, but the fact is that I have it if I want it. Something I want to show you here real quick though, and of course I'll say this over and over again, leaving all conclusions up to you, is if we punch into the dam, we punch into the building, we look at the detail of the brick, of the windows, this is the same window here on the right as the one on the left. I can't help but think that even at f1.4, the Sigma seems to bring out better details um, in these foreground structures, these foreground interests than the Rokinon. Case in point, let's look here. This doorway has a caution sign. On the Sigma, you can almost tell it's a caution sign <laughs> where on the Rokinon it looks like kind of a yellow block so I kind of feel like the Sigma has a little bit better or does a little bit better of a job at uh, rendering details in the foreground interests of your astrophotography shots so interesting these were shot at the same ISO if we look up here in the top right the uh, Sigma was shot at an ISO of 2500 and uh, f1.4 20 second exposure and the Rokinon was shot at the same 2500 ISO f1 or f2 and a 25 second exposure these were taken very carefully and I used my small HD focus to um, to make sure that focus was totally critically correct so I've done everything possible to reduce user error and I'm finding some interesting results and hopefully these have helped you as well. Thanks again for those of you who have subscribed. Thank you for liking this video as well. So there you have it. A pretty detailed head-to-head -head comparison for astrophotography between the Sigma and the Rokinon. I had a few opinions but again please 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 don't take my word for it check out these images. I'll put some examples in the comments that you can download so you can actually look at these on your own computer and draw your conclusions. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing and liking this video. Go out there and shoot something awesome this week. This is Dustin from D3 Imagery. Have a great day.